I finished issue 4, the user CRUD offline. As you can see, now I'm on this new branch, user dash CRUD. In this new feature branch, I added several files and modified one file. Under Hogwarts user package, I created a class for an important domain object, domain model, Hogwarts user. This is for user management. Then there is user controller, user service, user repository. There are two converters to convert between user and user DTO. Under test package, I created the Hogwarts user package. It has two test classes, user controller test and user service test. I modified the DB data initializer where I saved three users. Next, let's go over them one by one. Let's first start with the Hogwarts user, an important domain model. As you can see, here is the annotation at NTT. So this will let Spring Data take care of this class and convert it to a relational database table. A Hogwarts user has ID, username, password, enabled, and roles. The ID is auto-generated by Spring Data, starting at 1. Username, password, and roles are required. And here, we are using at empty annotation from Spring Boot starter validation to validate the values. Enabled is either true or false. The field roles is a space separated string. For example, admin space user. This indicates this user has two roles, the role of admin and the role of user. Of course, you can use comma separated string or colon separated string. But here I choose to use space separated string. Next, let's take a look at user DTO. As you can see here, user DTO is very similar to user, but it does not have password field because if the client is calling find all users or find a user by ID, it is not a good idea to send passwords back to the client. So when the server side is returning any information to the client, we will first convert user to user DTO using the converter and then send the user DTO back to the client. Next, let's take a look at the user controller. As I said before, in find all users, before the server side returns the found users, we'll use the user to user DTO converter to convert them to DTOs before sending them back to the client. Same thing for find user by ID. For add user, here we choose to use the Hogwarts user object to accept the new user because in this scenario, the client is sending username, password to this API endpoint. Since user DTO does not have a field called password, we cannot use that to accept the request body. That's why here we're using Hogwarts user. This part is different from artifact and wizard. For update user, we use user DTO to store the request body. So in this case, update user can update username, enabled, roles, but the client cannot use update user to update password. We still need another dedicated method called change password. And here is delete user. Now here is user service. 
It depends on user repository. And there's no surprise here. As you can see, we can only update username enabled and roles. Since username is not a primary key, so in our case, it's possible to change it. And here is the repository. Very simple. It extends JPA repository, Hogwarts user integer. And this is user DTO to user converter. And this is user to user DTO converter. Okay. As you can see that in user DTO, there is no password information. And this is considered as a good practice. Okay, here is the user service test. Set up, find all success, find by ID, find by ID not found, save success, update success, update not found, delete success, delete not found. Okay, it's very similar to artifact and wizard. And here is the controller. Find all, find user by ID, not found, add success, update success, update not found, delete success, delete not found. Okay. Finally, let's take a look at the DB data initializer. Here we created three users, John, Eric, and Tom. And then I use user repository to save them one by one. So that means we have to inject user repository into this DB data initializer. We also changed the constructor. Okay. All right. Next, let's run all the tests under Hogwarts user. Okay. All 16 test cases passed. Now let's run all the test cases. Right now we got 55 test cases in our project. They all passed. Very good. Next, let's use Postman to do some API integration testing. And we'll also take a look at the H2 database. And you will find a serious problem for this user crop at this moment. However, we're not going to fix it right now. We're going to wait until later. So first, let me start our project. So it's running on port 8080. Let's first talk over to H2 database, and I will show you the problem. As you can see here, now we have three tables. Thanks to Sprint data, it would take care of converting Java classes into tables. So let's click Hogwarts underscore user table and run. Good, we have three users inserted. But do you see the problem? This is a serious problem, is that we are storing users' password as plain text in the database. You're like, does it matter? This is a very bad practice. Not only bad, in some countries and areas, storing plain text passwords in the database is even illegal. What should we do? The good practice is that 
we should first encrypt or encode the passwords and then save the encrypted passwords into the database. So even if the database was hacked or breached, the hackers got those encrypted passwords and cannot know what the real passwords are. But as I said before, I will wait until I introduce Spring security later on. Next, let's talk over to Postman. As you can see, I have already created a folder that holds the five APIs. Find all users, send, John, Eric, and Tom. As you can see, no passwords are returned. Very good. Find a user by ID. Let's find John. John's here. Add a new user, Lily. And this is a password. Since we're registering a user, then the client has to pass the password to the server side. But do not return passwords from the server side to the client side. Send. Add success. Now we have a fourth user, Lily, true user. Update the user. So let's update John's username to John-update. Okay, so now John has a new username. Delete a user. Let's delete Eric, whose ID is equal to two. Send. Delete success. And now let's go to find all users. And find again. Eric is gone. All right, next, let's go back to IntelliJ, commit and push this branch to GitHub and close issue number four. Git status, okay. Git add all, git commit. User crud down. Close issue four. Git switch. Git status. Git pool. Git switch git merge man good then git push you see I'm very lazy right just copy and paste all right then let's talk over to github as you can see I've already checked all the user stories in this issue four. Let's refresh. Now we have a new branch, user dash crud. Let's compare and pull request. Create pull request. No conflicts. Merge pull request. Confirm merge. Okay, let's go to code. So this is the commit message. All right, if you go to issues, right now there's only one open issue, user authentication and authorization. There are four closed. Very good. Okay, let's go back to IntelliJ. Git switch main. Git status, All right? Then git pull. All right, now our main branch is in sync with the latest remote main branch. We're done with issue number four. Congratulations. This is a lot of work. If you follow me here, give yourself a pat on your back. Good job. And let's keep going. See you in the next video.